Today is Saturday, the 9th of September 2023, and we are all gathered here for the 98th session on mindfulness for beginners in the English medium. And to our great fortune, we have uh, Venal Bhante Homa Gamma Kusulatero joining um, into today's program, uh, representing Nisaranane Forest Monastery. And I would like to welcome uh, Venal Bhante with great respect to today's session. Also, we have all of you who are joining through uh, Zoom and also through the live stream over the Facebook webpage of the Satipasala Foundation, and I would like to uh, warmly welcome all of you to this session as well. Uh, to give you a, a rundown on how the program will uh, uh, commence and go on, uh, we will commence with uh, an in-session mindfulness uh, practice um, guided by Bhante, uh, perhaps with some uh, discussion between participants over Zoom. And then we will move on to the uh, talk on mindfulness, uh, which is uh, having the topic of uh, plain and pleasure, uh, pleasure and pain principle, uh, which we, is a continuation from last week's uh, talk on uh, the same subject. And then we will uh, move on to the question and answer session, presenting uh, written reports and any verbal uh, questions or statements to Bhante for valued insight from Bhante. So, uh, without uh, uh, further ado, I will like to invite Bhante to commence with incision practice. O to Bhante, much merits. Daman, the today's activity, Sonali would be handling, right? Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, I thought Bhante will be guiding it. All right. Uh, I invite Sonali to commence the incision uh, practice then. Thank you, Sonali. Uh, thank you, Namanta. Thank you, Bhante. Um, so today it is an activity. Um, we have learned this activity um, is guided by uh, a YouTube video that Bante had seen and uh, wanted us to demonstrate. It is about um, pain uh, and uh, trauma. So just to demonstrate that, um, we have some lipstick here, and that would be that would be um, representing a wound. Imagine you have a wound um, somewhere in your body, mind. Uh, our first reaction is to then hide it. We will be, we will put something over it thinking, okay, that we can't see anymore. So hopefully that will be dealing with it. But eventually someone will even brush past it. We will be in a lot of pain. And we will not know, uh, other people will not know why we are doing this uh, extreme reactions to people just walking past this. But we will know, that, I will know that it's because of this, this wound. So then we will decide to uh, deal with it in a different way. Some people will want to um, numb the pain by putting um, something to cover up, like it could be just dealing with different things, looking, um, uh, thinking about other things, thinking of alcohol, then we might think of drugs, alcohol, um, whatever else that numbs the pain. So we will then see how we can hide it best. So as long as it's hidden, we think it's dealt with. So, but the best way of dealing with the pain, according to what, with the principles that we're talking about today and Dhamma, is to actually open it all out and seeing what we are dealing with and looking at it properly. So that is the, the, the demonstration we'd like to do about pain and trauma. Um, Bante, do you think, did, did you think I did, did justice to that? Yeah, very much. Thank you for demonstrating that. Now, that's the idea. You can see. Now in our day-to-day -day life, we have so many things, such things coming towards us. Maybe certain, certain bad things happen. Maybe sometimes people that are dear to us, they pass away. So various things are there, various things happen. When such things happen, it is natural that we avoid them. It is natural that we want to get rid of them. That's how we do. That's how we do. That's how we usually function, right? So, but the wound is there. Wound is there. We don't have the strength to deal with it. We are avoiding it. Some people, they travel around the world. Now, there's somebody I know who is traveling around the world just to avoid 
dealing with such a thing, right? So it's hard, it's natural that uh, you want to avoid it. But in this practice, we say, especially related to this week's topic, we say that somehow we have to deal with it. Somehow we examine what the wound is. In a way, that's the very practice. We do various techniques. We have our meditation practice. We know we have our guidance towards the practice. So that way, we skillfully develop the ability to deal with this thing. In a way, we try to strengthen our mind so we are able to deal with them. So it's a gradual process. You can't heal yourself within a day or two. We all have such things hidden underneath our uh, conscious mind, or we can say in the, in the back end of our mind. These things are hidden. They don't come out that easily, but we know that they are there. We know that they are creating various issues in our life, especially due to these wounds. You, without even knowing, you react in a certain way, right? And you don't know the reasoning for such reactions, but if you really analyze yourself, if you are really aware about yourself, then you might realize that this is due to some past trauma that you had, a wound that is deep in your cycle, right? So that's the idea. And we can talk more about it during the talk as well. So if anybody would like to share something, we can take some time. Otherwise, we'll move forward to the next part. Amanta? Yes, Bhante. Sorry, I thought uh, uh, the session is still continuing. Okay. Uh, so uh, then we would move on to the talk on uh, mindfulness uh, based on the topic uh, itself. So I would again invite Bhante to come and see the talk for today. Much best to you, Bhante. Okay, everyone. So this is a continuation from last week. We, we had the, our initial session during last week, and it is about pain pleasure principle. So that's some idea from Sigmund Freud. And he is saying that whatever we do, the choices, the actions that we do, we try to minimize pain and we try to maximize pleasure. So based on that principle, we uh, choose certain things. We make our choices. Based on that principle, we do actions, we say things, we do things based on that principle. So that part, that initial part, we had a discussion last week. So today, we'll continue from there. We'll move it for, forward, especially towards the practice that we are doing. Now, to start today's talk, let me quote one of the ideas from Friedrich Nietzsche. In his writings, in his uh, expressions, he mentioned one thing. He hated alcohol. He hated alcohol. He, in his writings, he mentioned we should never consume alcohol. That was his idea, right? And why is he saying this? Why is he hating alcohol, right? So when we think about it, he's saying alcohol numbs our pain. That's what alcohol do, right? Now, when we talk to people who are consuming drugs, if you ask them, why do you consume? Then they might give various ideas, various comments. They usually say that they want to forget about their problems. At least for a few hours, they want to forget about them. Or they usually say that they want to, you know, talk to people, enjoy life. 
even without consuming something, if they are sober, they can't dance, they can't sing. Some people are there, only when they are drunk, they can dance. Otherwise, they can't do it, right? So various things are there, various comments are there. So they are saying, basically, I want to numb my pain. That's the idea of consuming alcohol. So Nietzsche, he says, if you consume alcohol, then it numbs your pain. And due to that, things might feel all right as they are. Things might feel just fine as they are. So Nietzsche is saying that's not a good thing because it will uh, remove or it will get rid of your will to change things. Because if the things are fine as they are, then you have no motivation to change things. So he's saying numb pain, it's not a good thing because you feel the things are fine as they are. And Nietzsche says that's bad, that's not good because then you won't have any motivation to change things. So in a way, pain, that's a big teacher. That's a great teacher. Pain will lead us to do certain certain things. Pain will make us do things to change things. In a way, pain is giving us the motivation to change things for better. Right? So in a way, pain is a good motivator. But if you are not ready to deal with it, if your mind is weak, then it can even destroy you. So you can see how much pain is helpful in our practice. If there is no pain in life, I don't think you'll be here. On a Saturday, joining for a session for one and a half hours, and trying to practice meditation. You would have much better things to do if you don't have pain in your life. You might go be on the road, traveling somewhere, trying to enjoy life. You might be with some people, party, right? So in a way, this pain that each of us feels that is a good motivator. So that's why Nietzsche is saying we shouldn't be consuming alcohol because alcohol numbs the pain. And numb pain, it's not a good thing. It feels like things are okay just as they are. If the things are okay just as they are, then we have no motivation to change things. Then we won't be encouraged to change things. So you can see how much of a role pain is playing in our life. If you are a meditator, if you try to find real peace in this life, then you must have certain, certain incidents in your past that create a lot of pain and suffering. That was the leading cause, that was the motivator for you to practice meditation. That was the motivation for you to listen to a talk about meditation. So that's how we are motivated. So although pain is bad, although you don't feel comfortable with pain, it is a good motivator for you to practice. It is a good motivator that will lead you towards the practice. So you can feel it. Even in day-to-day -day life, we see certain certain things happen. We meet certain certain people. Always you can feel at times there's friction, there's pain, and sometimes it goes into extreme levels of suffering. This is happening again and again. Some people, they are suffering with various mental illnesses, because they can't deal with this world. Some people, they are addicted to drugs 
because they can't deal with this pain. Some people, they look for certain, certain other things to numb their pain. Some people travel around the world avoiding the problem that's there in their mind. They try to avoid this by traveling around the world. But still, that wound, that problem is within. And wherever you go, you are traveling with it. So this is how people deal. But as meditators, we say we have a much better way to, way to deal with pain. As meditators, we say we have a much healthier way to deal with pain. So if you remember last week's discussion, we mentioned that although we, it's natural that we feel that we want to avoid pain, it's natural that we feel that we want to maximize pain. But in a way, in the name of the practice, we try to, in a way, we try to accept whatever the pain that comes to us. We don't go looking for pain. Instead, when the pain comes, we try to accept it. We try to see what this pain is. We try to see how it is creating suffering in your mind. So that way, we have a different approach towards this pain pressure principle. Although the worldly people, it's natural that they want to minimize pain, they want to maximize pleasure. But in a way, with, with meditation, with this practice, we go against that tendency. Maybe the society, it has taught you to follow this principle. That's what the parents are saying. That, that's what the schools are saying. That's what the society is saying. But with meditation practice, with the support of the practice, we try to follow some other principle. Instead of following this usual worldly pain pleasure principle, we try to follow something else. When the pain comes to us, we try to find the reasoning behind it. Why do I suffer so much due to this? Now, even last week's reports, one of you mentioned that when a headache comes, it's natural that you want to avoid it. You go for painkillers. Every day you have to pain, take a painkiller sometimes just to deal with the headache that you are getting. But with the help of the practice, with the help of the mindfulness, you just observe the headache and you feel there is a tightness in my head. There is some moving pain in my head. But when I observe it for a while, when I sit with it for a while, after some time it disappears. And I could survive a headache without painkillers. So that type of a report was there, right? So this is, you are very experienced when you practice mindfulness, you realize that these things come. Body is aching pain. Your head is aching pain. But still, with the power of mindfulness, you can simply observe it. You don't need anything else. You don't need chemical aid to deal with it. So that's the very practice. Even when you are aware about the present moment, reality or the present moment, it's not always pleasant. It's natural that we want to avoid it. Your body feels irritated. Your mind, you get a lot of thoughts, memories, various things. All the recent problems, they come. So it's natural that you want to get rid of it. It's natural that you want to avoid the reality. It's natural that you want to avoid the present moment. But as mindfulness, the very practice is to become aware of the present moment. Just observe what is happening in the present moment. Your body is aching pain, but you just become the observer. You get various thoughts, past memories, various things come, but you just become the 
observe. So that way you start your practice. Every day you take few minutes just to sit with your mind and body and be mindful. Every day you take few minutes just to walk. It's a walk without any destination. Mindful walking. You walk for just you, you walk just for the sake of walking. You have no destination. It's a walk without destination. You simply walk and try to just be with that walking. Try to notice what you feel when you walk. So that's how we start our practice. Gradually, you develop your ability to be present while walking. Gradually, you develop your ability to be present while sitting. That's the idea. Now, usually the practice, practitioners, they think that you have to be with your body all the time. If you are with your steps, you are mindful. If you are with your breath, you are mindful. That is the usual idea for a newcomer. But after a while, when you practice for a while, we say that you can be mindful of the sounds. You can mindfully observe how the thoughts come and go while knowing that you are walking, while knowing that you are breathing. Gradually, we release our grip. We release our grip so the other things might appear. The thoughts appear. Various memories appear, emotions appear, they appear. Surrounding sounds are also there. We release our grip a little bit. When we release our grip, it's natural that the day-to-day -day thoughts, they are appearing in our mind. The problems that happened yesterday, the things we have to do tomorrow, the mind goes again and again talking about them again and again, weaving them from different angles. So that's how it works. But if you know the mindfulness, if you know the proper practice, you would know that although these thoughts are there in the background, I can still be mindful. I can still continue with my mindfulness. While walking, I know the thoughts are there, but I feel the body as well. While sitting, I know the breathing is there, but I feel the thoughts in the background. So that way, you little by little develop your confidence. You develop your confidence. In a way, you release your grip more and more. When you release your grip, it's natural. This release, it won't happen within a day or two. Maybe within weeks, within months, you gradually release your grip. When you release your grip, the mind won't always stay with the body. It will float. It will go to various objects. These objects are identical to you. That's the thing. When you release your grip, the objects that appear, the thoughts, the memories, the various other things that appear, they are unique to you. They are identical to you. So you can see, depending, in your, depending on your character, depending in your, on your personality, these thoughts, these memories, these emotions, they appear. We consider it as a good thing. Now you start to see real you. You are not pretending. You are not acting. Instead, you start to see real you. These thoughts create the real you. These emotions, memories, they create the real you. So you can see the real you is appearing little by little. So you have to know that this is a good thing in meditation because releasing this grip, it will lead you towards healing. The healing that is related to today's topic. The healing that mentioned during today's activity. So these things are usually from the past. They are very old. They are deep. 
in your ass, as mind. Right? So usually they are not apparent. They are not on the surface. But when you release a grip in meditation, instead of doing, when you allow things to happen, now you are no longer doing much. The meditation is happening. You are not meditating instead. It is happening. Right? That's what I mean by releasing the grip. When you release that grip, when the meditation is happening, it's natural that the deep wounds, psychological wounds that's in your mind, they gradually start to appear. They don't come quickly, swiftly. Instead, gradually they start to appear. Sometimes recent incidents might come. Few months ago, things that happened few months ago. They are not that deep. They are not that uh, influential. But still, the process will start. You can see certain, certain things, they come. When they come, if, especially if they are painful, then you might want to avoid it. You might say, I don't want to meditate. Uh, I would prefer doing something else. Those comments are there. But we encourage you to continue your practice. Every day, do your sitting practice. Do your walking practice. Continue with mindfulness in your day-to-day. -day, right? So when you do it for a while, within few months, within few years sometimes, you feel certain, certain incidents, they come. Especially the incidents that happened during your childhood. Childhood. Right? Maybe the things that you can't, you can't even remember. Some things are there that you can't even remember. But suddenly in meditation, they start to appear. You wonder whether this happened or whether this is, this is a dream. You wonder why you couldn't remember this before. But it is natural that they appear. And when they appear, it won't go suddenly. As long as you are avoiding it, as long as you are suppressing it, it will be there. It will be there. So what you have to do, in a way, you gradually develop the ability to accept this. Allow the mind to continue with its process. In a way, it is a filing process that is happening. In your mind, a filing process is happening. What happens is that this filing process was interrupted because the incident was hurtful. The memories were bad. So you didn't allow the filing process to continue. You interrupted it. Maybe with drugs, maybe with traveling around the world, maybe with some other distraction. You tried to interrupt it. You didn't allow that natural filing process to happen. So they were stuck in deep in your mind. And in meditation, gradually, they come to the surface. When they come, you feel the pain again and again. The same pain you might experience, you might relieve. But little by little, not within a day, probably within weeks, you develop your strength. You allow that filing process to continue. When you allow you can see this same incident, it is replayed in your mind. Not just once, not just twice, maybe hundreds of times, the same incident is replayed. Maybe inner chatter is there related to that incident. Maybe that incident is viewed from different angles, the same incident, right? So this is the filing process. This is the natural process that will happen in your mind. So when you allow this, this process is happening. Again and again, this process is happening. And when you allow it for a while, you realize this incident, your mind is no longer interested in. Because you allow the filing process to happen, you accept it, that fate 
that incident. When you accept it, you feel that the mind is no longer interested. Now you intentionally bring that incident to your memory, but still the mind won't replay that incident. Still the mind is not interested in that incident. What happens? The filing process was completed and it is a no longer, no longer there's a wound. That incident is, it doesn't interest you anymore. It doesn't interest your mind anymore. The memories are there. Don't get me wrong. The thoughts are there. The memories are there. Right? But it won't last. It won't occupy space in your mind. That's the change that will happen. With repetitive practice, this change will happen. When you allow these things to continue, when you release your grip, this change will happen. The same incident was replayed hundreds of times. Now, the mind is no longer interested. The memories are there, the thoughts are there, but still, they don't occupy my, much space in your mind. So that's just one incident. When that is done, maybe for, for some time, the meditation is smooth. And you are calm and peaceful. You don't get anything else. You, know, you feel peace while doing the practice. But maybe after a few months or a few weeks, you feel another incident is surfacing. Another thing that happened is surfacing. Right? In your mind, it is surfacing uh, during the practice, during the meditation. Again, the same process is valid. Again, you gradually develop the ability to accept Little by little, you allow this thought process, the filing process to continue. And you can feel that after a few weeks, after a few days, that too doesn't interest your mind anymore. So this is the process that, that will happen in meditation. When, you say, when I say meditation, don't get it wrong. You are not suppressing your emotions. You are not suppressing your thoughts. When you mature in your meditation, you have to release the grip. You have to allow this natural process to continue. When that natural process, you allow that natural process, then only the real meditation will begin. In a way, meditation is not something you do. If you are doing much, then that's not the real meditation. Instead, the meditation is about None doing. You just allow whatever the natural process to continue. Let it be thoughts. Let it be memories. Let it be surrounding sounds. Let it be aches, pains in your body. Whatever. Just allow that natural flow. Allow that natural process. So you can see gradually a healing process is happening. A healing process is happening. Maybe things from your childhood. Maybe the people you separated from during your life. So various things come and go. Uh, although you feel painful, although you feel that you are reliving that difficult situation, there is an end. There is an end to this process. That is the promise the practice is giving us. If you are patient enough, if you wait long enough, then you might feel that there is an end to this. That confidence is very important. Otherwise, we say that this is not ending. I'm suffering again and again. These thoughts, memories come. So I don't feel like this is ending. But there is an end. That's the promise that's given in the practice. If you are patient enough, if you wait long enough, whatever that comes, it will end. This too shall pass. That's the idea. Recently, I found an additional part to this quote. They say this too shall pass. It might pass like a kidney stone. 
but it will pass. That's the promise that they are giving. This too shall pass. It might pass like a kidney stone, but it will pass. So when a kidney stone passes, you know how it feels like, right? So it might pass like that, but it will pass. That's the promise. That's the truth about the practice. So whatever comes, you have to somehow face it, somehow patiently deal with it, somehow develop the ability. That is the real way, that is the healthy way of dealing with these things. Otherwise, always you are hurting, always you are paining due to no reason. You don't feel the reason. You feel that you are anxious. You feel that you are always in panic. You feel that your mind goes crazy. And you see no apparent reason. You, you, you have a good job. You have a good income. You have a good family. You are just fine. But still, in your mind, you are suffering. In your mind, there's always panic. In your mind, there's always anxiety. So you wonder why, why, the, why do I feel this way, you might ask from you. But you have to realize, that although it is not apparent, maybe it is due to the past trauma, maybe it is due to the incidents that you, you have suppressed in your mind. They are underneath, like... Sonali demonstrated during today's activity, although you cover it up, the wound is there. Again and again, it is creating issues. You might think that the wound is no longer there just because you covered it. You might just feel fine. But again and again, irritations are there. Again and again, you feel pain. Again and again, you feel that your mind is out of control. You get so much uh, panicking situation. You feel anxious. So you wonder why. But if you allow the meditation to continue, if you allow this healing process to continue, then with time, with practice, you realize you start to feel much more bearable. This life is much more bearable and in your mind you feel peace. You feel higher and higher degrees of peace within you. So that's the true measure. A great way to measure your progress in the practice. You see incremental levels of peace within you. I think that's a good enough reason to meditate even. If you want to find peace within, this is the way. more you practice, incremental levels of peace you might start to feel. So that's the idea. Meditators, they feel this. When they start their practice, maybe they were anxious. They had so many panicking situations in their life. For no reason, they were suffering with things. But they, when they continue for a few weeks, few months, they realize they feel incremental levels of peace with it. And that process is still continuing. More you practice, higher levels of peace you feel. More and more space is emptied in your mind because this garbage is properly processed. When you process the garbage, it doesn't occupy so much space in your mind. That's the idea. The incidents, the memories are there, but they won't occupy space. And when they don't occupy space in your mind, you have extra capacity within you. 
in your mind also you have extra capacity what can you do with this extra capacity whatever you are willing you can use that capacity let's say your family matters you can use that capacity your profession you can use that capacity whatever the learnings you want to do you can use that capacity because your mind is not overloaded these things are cleared out these things are properly filed now you have much more space the processing capacity in your mind so that's the idea that's the idea when you meditate you become sharper and sharper because your mind is with empty capacity you have a lot of processing capacity whatever you do you can quickly get it done efficiently get it done imagine about a computer maybe like 20 years back we had certain certain computers although they were the best at at that time still when you do a task you can feel the processor is trying so much because the capacity is poor i even remember during my uh, probably like a levels i had this computer whenever a task is done it it makes this weird noise because the capacity is poor it is making noises it is it is taking time to do it right but nowadays we have more, much more advanced computers right nowadays when you want to copy something when you want to do a certain task you see the capacity is much higher the processing capacity and you can quickly get it done and you can do much complex things now because you have the higher capacities so that's the same thing with our mind earlier it was the capacity was lower because it was full of garbage so many things were occupying space there so without you knowing or uh, knowingly or unknowingly they were occupying space now they are properly filed now they don't occupy much space you feel that although those things are there your capacity is much free you can utilize it for whatever the thing you want to do so that's a good thing uh, you feel that your life whatever the things you do you can do them more successfully more efficiently in addition due to this change you feel much more peaceful within incremental levels of peace you feel so if you recall whatever that led to this change was the pain in this life in our life we feel pain if you don't feel pain you are not motivated towards the practice you are not motivated towards finding a lasting solution that's why nietzsche is saying he hates alcohol because the alcohol numbs pain and it will suggest that things are just fine but pain is a good motivator it's a good teacher if you know how to use it if you know how to properly use it otherwise it can destroy you that's why so many people are addicted to drugs so many people they suffer with mental illnesses they don't know the way they don't know a proper solution so they become victims of pain but if you know the proper way if you know the practice then pain is a good motivator the pain leads us to find a lasting solution and that's the meditation with that you can create peace within you feel this life is much more tolerable this life is much more peaceful that's something valuable now in this current world in this new age people are saying that the paradise is somewhere else we are banished from paradise 
and we suffer here. But if you are a meditator, if you know the true practice, you realize we are already in paradise. We were thinking that we were banished from paradise. We were thinking we are in this some kind of a suffering state. But we are already in paradise. You feel much more incremental levels of peace within. You feel even the trees are much greener. You feel even the birds are singing much more beautifully. Even the sky, the colors, it will create so much bliss within you. Why? Because your mind is at peace. Whoever that, that are in your life, you can feel there is less and less conflict with them. Why? Because whether they have meditated. No, you, are, you have meditated. Your mind is at peace. The root cause of conflict, it's within you. Not in outside world. They could be bad. They could behave in certain ways. But the root cause is within you. That's why there is so much conflict in your life. So you might feel, although they, are, they haven't changed, you are not triggered by them. You don't suffer so much. And sometimes you might even enjoy the company of them. So you can see how a changed mind is leading to a changed world. The change should happen within. When that happens, you feel even the trees are, they are greener. Even the birds, they are singing more beautifully. Even the colors of the sky, they are mesmerizing. Even the people that's around you, maybe even the strangers, you feel even talking to, with, talking to them, spending time with them, it's much more blissful. So this is the peace within. This is how you can find lasting peace. So we encourage all of you to continue your, your practice. With that practice, you can truly experience this. I know you already experienced this into a certain degree. But the process, it's not, it, it's, it's still continuing. You might feel incremental levels of peace if you continue your practice. So continue practicing and experience for yourself. That's the idea for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Bhante, and um, uh, many merits for Bhante for explaining uh, this principle in uh, great detail. Um, and then next we have uh, the question and answer session uh, coming up. I would like to invite uh, Sonali to commence with the session uh, for question and answers. I will share the screen for the introduction. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Namanta. Um, so before we start the uh, report, we will um, discuss uh, quickly about the um, methods that you'd need to follow. Anissa Ramana has sent us some uh, guidelines and videos to follow uh, if you are a beginner or if you need to uh, refresh. Um, there is a video about mindful walking and another about mindful sitting. Uh, you can watch these two videos and um, then uh, separate out some time to sit down and start practicing. You can start practicing with any amount of time and eventually gradually move up to um, to uh, another is what we think another a day for walking, another a day for sitting meditation. Uh, you could always um, extend the practice to daily activities as well. And um, once you do that, you could uh, write the report to us. You would have one of the reports today. You can look as a... Um, a guideline as well. You can send them to us via the Google form uh, at, or the email beginnersnv at gmail.com. We will put all these details in the chat. Uh, it's already on the chat. Uh, and you could use those links to send it to us. Once the reports are sent to us, we will present it to Bante and get his um, uh, guide, guide uh, for you. 
Uh, and there is only one report received today. Uh, there were no reports received um, via the Google form, only one via email. I will read it out to you now. Mindful sitting, sat on the cushion and gently closed eyes. Few body scans took place, noted pressure in right shoulder area. It then relaxed. Breath noted afterwards, not sure if sounds were picked up from the background. Breath had become subtle, noted this when searching for it and realized it was barely felt. Thoughts would rise and pass away. None were picked by mind for proliferation. When the primary object changed from um, gross to subtle breath or to thoughts, sounds, feelings in body, etc., the very small gap between the change of object noted. Breath broke up as if it, uh, it uh, perforated or like multiple mini breaths making up one breath. Sat for one hour, four minutes. No alarm set. Calmness in the mind and body continued afterwards. Mindfulness during the day. Last week was extremely busy with work, few social events and other responsibilities. When the pressure was building, um, attention moved several times to the bodily feelings. Tight muscles noted, and these would relax easily. Mental pressures lasted longer, but was able to notice the thinly disguised annoyance, irritation, and impatience. Intentionally moved attention to the task at hand, which helped to somewhat calm the mind. Heat element noted in the chest area when annoyance and impatience arose. This process continued multiple times in the week. There was enough awareness to not just bulldoze through things and took time out for a few minutes intentionally. It was simply a week that had too many things booked or agreed, bringing the attention to the body and mind and helped with regulating emotions, relaxing the body and to continue with tasks with less and less annoyance and irritation. Usually, writing the weekly report had been fairly straightforward, but this one had to be written within limited time. Debated on not writing one this week, but the habit of writing a regular weekly report um, propelled the mind forward and had enough energy to complete it. The Abanti look forward to your feedback. Much merit to the organizers. End of report. Okay, thank you for sharing. Now, these are the real experience that we have to discuss. Now, you can see, if I go to the first part first, now the thoughts are there, none were picked by the mind. So they just come and go. You don't have to worry about them. Sometimes we tend to worry, but still, um, after a while, the thought passes, right? So these are not uh, picked, right? So they are in the background. You don't have to worry about it. So this is a good uh, way to continue your meditation. You are no longer suppressing them. Instead, you allow those, those thought processes to continue and you have mindfulness to guide you towards the practice. You know that these things are there in the background, but you feel the breath as well. You feel the walking as well. So that's the proper way to continue uh, it comes as a surprise to some people. Even a few weeks ago, a few days ago, a long-time practitioner, she was telling that this came as a surprise. This is new to me, but I am developing this ability. What's the ability? You allow your thought processes to continue while doing the meditation. You don't judge your meditation based on the thoughts that you get. They have this judgment. They think no thoughts, the meditation is good. Thoughts, meditation is bad. That's the idea. But that's not the practice that we are talking about. That's not the practice that we are recommending. We are recommending mindfulness. And the mindfulness is there. If the thoughts are there, you know the thoughts are there. 
if the breath is there, you know that you are breathing. If the bodily expands are there, you know that you, your body expands, right? So that's the way. Even the long time practitioners, they don't know this point. They don't like this point. But that's the proper way to continue your practice. The thoughts are there. They are in the background. They don't occupy my, much space. You continue with your practice. You just uh, manage somehow. So that's one thing. Then it comes to the second part. I, I mentioned during the talk even, when you have extra capacity in your mind, you can handle so many things. So this is a one way uh, to get use out of that, that capacity. Imagine if you don't know the practice, then after this week, you might feel sick. Some people, they even fall sick. Why? Because they had too much. They, they had too, too many things to do during the week. They do. Somehow they function. They gulp down coffee after coffee. And somehow they function. But towards the end of it, they fall sick. And even for days, weeks, they can't get up because of the sickness. So that's how worldly people, the people they, who don't know the practice, that's how they do. But for a practitioner, if you know that the pressure is building, then you can do something about it. Otherwise, the pressure keeps building and you don't know. Towards the end of the day, you feel sick. You sleep through the night, getting up next day, still feel like you want to sleep six more hours. Why? Because the pressure kept building throughout the day. Towards the end day, you feel sick. You are too tired to even go home. You are too tired to talk to your family members. That's how we usually function. We continue building pressure. But the idea of mindfulness is that every time the pressure builds, there's a trigger. And as soon as you get that trigger, the pressure is released. You know that the tightness is there. You know that the heat is there. You know that the headache is there. You allow some time to relax yourself and the pressure is released. Again, after a few hours, it is building. Again, you are relaxing yourself. So imagine a balloon that uh, if, if the air is pumped in, then the balloon is getting larger and larger. So that, that's similar to the pressure building. But if you release, the, release it, then you can realize that the air is released. No longer there is pressure. Right? Similarly, in our mind, when we are mindful, uh, we allow the pressure to release. Intentionally, we take a break. Intentionally, we notice the bodily sensations. You notice the tightness within. You notice the heat during an argument. So that's meditation. Even that moment that you are really noticing the tightness within, that moment, it's a moment of meditation. Even when you are noticing the heat within during an argument, that moment that you are noticing, it's a moment of meditation. So this way, you are taking frequent breaks. This way, you are releasing pressure. Right? Then you feel, although you had so many things during the week, Although you had too many things during the week, you feel you somehow managed. And even you are able to spend some time writing a meditation report about it. So that's how the extra capacity you can use this way. I'm not suggesting to, you know, have too much to do. But instead, this is one way. One way of utilizing that capacity. Maybe without meditation, we couldn't do so many things during a week, right? So that way you have to gradually 
approach this. Even the people who deal with so many things, if they know this, then they realize they can do the same amount of things with much less power wastage or with much more efficiency. They do, they have so many things, they do the same amount, but still they feel lower and lower levels of stress pressure. Why is that? It's with the help of the practice. So that way you have to continue. And if you feel that you are wearing off, then you know what to do. You can take a break. You can meditate. You can, you know, go for a walk. Probably even at your workplace, you can go for a walk. It could be a park. It could be a busy street. But still, it comes as a break. Right? You can go for a snack. You can go and do walking meditation in car park. So you can find various things that you can do if you are aware. The very thing that's leading to these things is awareness, nothing else. If you are not aware, then you can't do anything about it. If you are aware only, you can do something. So that's the very idea of your experience. When you are aware about the pressure building, when you are aware about the headache, when you are aware about these things, you can do something about it. You can take a break. You can relax yourself. The tightness, you can relax yourself. You can notice the heat within during an argument. So these are valid ways that comes as a uh, solution. The very first thing that's leading these to these things is the awareness. If you are aware only, you can do something about it. So thank you for sharing your experience. You can continue and see how the practice is maturing. Thank you, Bante. Um, since last week, we didn't allow time for questions, um, and it is the same topic. This week, we have some time uh, allocated for questions. Uh, if anyone would like to raise your hand, we will allow time to um, express uh, your um, thoughts. Buddhika, I can see your hands raised. Um, please go ahead and unmute and ask your question or thought. I had trouble unmuting myself. Um, actually, my uh, I listen to usually Dhamma talk with my two daughters. Today, I have only one daughter. She's 15 years old. She wants to share um, some thoughts. And also maybe, I'm not sure whether she has questions. I'll hand over to her, Bante. Thank you. Hi, Bante. Um, yeah, go ahead. You are muted, it seems. Hi, Bante. Um, when you were talking about earlier, with the feeling of pain and like avoiding yeah avoiding the pain something that i've come to notice quite recently is for example when you put your hand on a hot stove and you feel that pain you know that you need to take your hand off of the stove that's that's the purpose of feeling pain. Most of the time, when we feel negative emotions like pain or sadness or guilt or anger, it's our body telling us that we don't like the situation that we're in or, we're, or we are uncomfortable about something. Um, I think that being able to recognize that emotions aren't bad that that they can feel bad and that they can feel really um uncomfortable is an important thing to do but it can be a lot more beneficial to not to label that. yeah not to label something as bad. a bad emotion 
um, I would like to ask your thoughts on this. Okay, thank you for raising that question, especially depending on your age, you are 15 years old. So this is a very valuable question that uh, that would help a lot during your life, especially if you are able to discuss something like this at this age, right? So you are becoming an adult and sometimes that world is overwhelming. So these things you have to go through. Now the childhood, it's ending. Your parents' protection, it's ending. You have to earn yourself. You have to deal with people, deal with the society. So that's, that period is ahead. So when that period comes, it's important that we have such skills, right? How to deal with pain and suffering that we face in our life. So as you mentioned about the physical pain, when we touch something hot, automatically we, are, we, we get triggered and we take our hand away, right? So that's natural. So when, when it comes to the physical pain, this is true. That's why I mentioned we are not seeking pleasure, seeking pain. You have to uh, understand it properly. We are not seeking pain. If we say seeking pain, then of course we, 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 we would go harming ourselves. We would keep touching the hot things just to feel pain, right? So that's not valid. That's, that's not something that we should be doing. We are not pain seekers. But there are certain things that comes in your life that you can't really avoid. As you mentioned, the, let's say emotional pain, suffering, those things, it's natural that you want to avoid. That's why some people, they get addicted to drug, drugs. That's one way of avoiding. Some people, they travel around the world trying to avoid their own emotions, thoughts, trying to get far away from them. They travel, right? So various ways are there. Addictions are there. Social media, that's one way, right? Various things are there, various ways are there. So they try to avoid it. It's natural that we, we feel the need to avoid it. As you mentioned, if, if something is hot, we don't continue touching it. We can take our hand away. But when it comes to these things, they act different, especially with the emotional pain, suffering. It is different. Although you try to avoid it, it won't go, go away. That's the issue, right? You can travel to the other side of the world, still it will come with you. I remember one time this uh, young guy, he was a lawyer. Uh, he, he was from uh, America, California. A uh, white person. He, he came here. I had email uh, uh, communications with him before and he came earlier for like few days this time he came for three months right so he wanted to improve his practice improve his meditation and he he, he noticed us earlier and he came so after coming here although you want to meditate although you appreciate the practice after coming here the conditions might not be feeling pleasing, right? So when you continue your practice as a re residential retreat, your body aching pain. And you are with some unknown people. They don't behave according to your wishes, right? Then in a forest, you get various creatures biting you. Mosquitoes are there, leeches are there. So, so many difficulties are there, right? So he kept meditating for a few days. But he couldn't bear with this situation. So he was finding faults with, uh, with the creatures that are in the forest, with the people in the meditation hall, then with the environment, it is too hot, humid, right? So the, with the food, 
whatever he deals with, he, he found false with them. And within few days, maybe uh, probably like two weeks, after two weeks, he left. He left. He couldn't bear this. Now he think about him. He's leaving this place and he's going back to his home country. He's going home. Right? Still, the problem is with him. Although he travels to the other side of the world, he is traveling with the problem. The problem is with him, his own mind. That's why, that was the very first reason he came here to solve that problem. Although he had a good job, he, although he had money, although he had everything he needed, he, he wasn't happy. So that was the very first problem. That's what, that's where he started meditating. Right? So still coming here, reserved three months, he couldn't stay. After two weeks, he left. So he is leaving in the problem, right? Although you'll go for, to some other country, the thoughts, are emo thoughts and emotions are there. The emotional pain, it won't go away. Like you can't just, uh, like you take your hand away, you can't just forget about it. It's not how it works, right? So you you have to approach it in, in a different way. Physical pain is something. Emotional pain is something else, totally different. And when it comes to emotional pain, you have to strengthen your mind. That is the only way, right? You can't avoid it. Avoidance won't work. It might work temporarily. For a few weeks, few months, it might work, but it won't last forever. That's the issue, right? That's why there is a mental health crisis in this world. That's why so many drug addicts are there in this world. That's why so many people, they commit suicide in this world, right? They don't know how to deal with it. So this ability, you have to gradually develop gradually develop. We are not suggesting that you can deal with whatever the emotional troubles you have within a day. Instead, we say you have to gradually develop this ability within you. Can you spend like 15 minutes doing formal meditation daily? That's a good place to start. Every day, just for 15 minutes, you do a sitting session. While walking here and there, you try to be mindful. Climbing stairs, you try to be mindful. That way you continue your practice 15, 20, 30 minutes daily. That's a good starting point. And you continue with that for a few weeks. Usually meditation, it's not something that interests our mind. We don't feel like doing it. right? It's like brushing your teeth in the morning. You don't feel you are not interested in that. But anyway, you are doing. Why? For your physical health, physical hygiene. So similarly, can you do like 15, 20 minutes of formal sitting early in the morning? Why? For your mental hygiene. It's not something interesting, but anyway, you are doing. Anyway, you are doing because of your mental health. So that way, you continue for a few months. When you continue that way, then gradually you realize you develop this ability in your mind. You develop the ability in your mind to deal with these things. Now in your comment, you mentioned uh, not labeling these thoughts, emotions. That's the way. But can we do it? Usually what happens is that even without our intention, our mind is labeling. Even without us knowing, our mind is suffering. That's how this process is. Right? You don't feel the in-between actions. You feel directly you suffer. You get a thought, next moment you know you are suffering. Again get a thought, next moment you already have the labeling done. Again, get a thought, next moment you feel your mind is creating a story. 
out of this right so that's how the mind works it is so swift we don't even feel the steps in between some people they call, call talk about this dependent origination and they say this is how it is happening but it's a some of the this process is there i can notice all the steps they are saying but that's not how it works there's this great analogy from a teacher he's saying when you fall from a tree you don't count the branches you are passing that's not how it works you remember falling you remember slipping and next moment you feel the pain you go hit the ground you feel the pain again you go hit the ground you feel the pain this is the process of the mind you remember slipping the next moment you feel the pain so maybe you have passed certain branches along the way but you didn't have enough time to label them that's how our mind works it is naturally labeling without even knowing it is labeling as bad bad thoughts it, without even knowing it is suffering due to these thoughts without even knowing it is creating a story without even knowing it is planning how to avoid this right so this is our mind so you have to gradually approach it skillfully approach it gradually develop the ability to uh, deal with this them deal with these thoughts emotions gradually develop the ability to accept them that is the strength of the meditation it does with that strength you feel now your mind is able to accept them more and more now your mind is not labeling them so much now your mind is not trying to avoid them so much so that change will happen with time it is a natural change that will happen you have to allow that change to happen allow that change to mature that's why we say 15 years old you don't have to worry about the practice so much just try to do a sitting 15 minutes a day every day 15 minutes you do a meditation session then you live your life the world is your oyster you go and enjoy right but again tomorrow do another 15 minutes of sitting again and live your life day after tomorrow again can you do a 15 minutes so 15 minutes per day spending for formal meditation it's not a long time maybe you are spending hours staring at a phone maybe you are spending hours watching tv maybe you are spending hours talking to your friends so just 15 minutes that's an investment that we are doing every day we do sometimes we we forget but next day again we start so that way you can continue for few months you don't worry about meditation much you are young you enjoy the world while doing this then after few months you realize i experience the world differently practice has changed me now my mind has more strength so that's the way it works that's the way it works otherwise wishing not to label imagining that these thoughts won't harm thinking to avoid that's not how it works emotional pain you can't deal with it like that so thank you for asking the question i wish it is it will be much useful in your life to come <clears throat> thank you bante i hope that was useful um uh for putika and your daughter um if there's anyone else with questions we do have some more time left today please raise your hand and if you have trouble unmuting yourself do let me know and uh, we will see what we can do from this end thank you very much bante can't see any raised hands um and we have shared all the reports as well um maybe there are no questions today uh Now Mantha what what do you think do you think we will uh, uh take on and end the session early today or should we allow a little bit more time
Yes, I think we can end the session. Bante, uh, what is your advice here? Uh, I think I know the answer. <laughs> yeah, no, Bante, it's good to end uh, once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Often the session goes over time and Bante has another program, so we should give the uh, chance for Bante to relax today. So thank you everyone for sending the written report and also for the verbal question. And thank you to Sonali for... Uh, conducting uh, uh, for supporting in the Q&A session and much more to Bhante for uh, a deep uh, uh, discussion and insightful uh, uh, talk and question and answer session uh, and for the effort for this from Bhante saying thank you and much more to Bhante. So we would um, try to end, uh, move to its ending session today. I would like to share all these merits gained with Bhante and hope that these merits will have a positive uh, knock-on impact on Bhante's own practice moving forward and that uh, Bhante will be able to realize Bhante's uh, uh, objectives uh, quickly with the, with the power of these uh, merits. Plus, we would like to also mention with great respect uh, most venerable Bhante Udayirikam Dhammajiva Mahatero, the chief abbot, of the Nisarane Forest Monastery who recognized the importance of a program of this nature and requested this program to be initiated. So we, we wish these merits will pass on to Chief Pante and that he will have long life, good health, and that he will be able to realize his objectives uh, with the power of these accumulated merits. And we have a wonderful team of uh, organizers who are behind the program, uh, helping throughout in the program, maybe present in the session or not present in the se session. They are working in the background. I would like to uh, uh, share these merits with them, all of them, and hope that their own practices will flourish into the future. And uh, we would like to share all these merits with all of you who are in the Zoom session and also might be who might be watching uh, the program through the live stream. We would like to share these merits with you and hope that these insights and merits uh, will um, improve your own practices and that you are able to continuously join uh, these sessions and gain. Uh, uh, these uh, kind of uh, great learnings and great learning outcomes. Now the session, uh, the program will continue uh, next Saturday uh, as well, uh, same time. And uh, we would like to uh, see you in the same session again. And uh, we, I wish that all of you are able to practice further and improve uh, towards gaining more insights through your own practice uh, combined with these learnings today. And we will see you next week, same time. And I would like to wish you all a happy and mindful week ahead. Thank you. I will end this session now. Thank you.